Hi, I'm Jenny, and I'm at a lava field. Park the car off to the side. There's not a parking lot or anything. There's just a small little alcove you can pull off on. <laughs> I'm on my way up to the D Wright Observatory. One of the pit stops on the way there is a sea of lava. We've got a lot of smoke from the fires, so it's kind of hard to see through the clouds here, but this is little Belknap. You can see behind there would be the Belknap Crater. And Mount Washington should be straight in front of us, but you can't really see that at all. 1700 year old lava river. Kind of just looks like a whole bunch of rocks, of course. We have a little trail off to the side here. I don't know what that is. I guess I'll just walk down here really quick. <laughs> this looks like it would be a great place to take some portraits. A whole, ooh, I'm standing on cliffs. Yeah, just a little lower off to the side. Is a different view. I always love when I'm in the middle of the, the middle of nowhere and you hear like a bee or a fly. And you think, how did you get here? I'm gonna get back in the car. We're on our way up to the D Wright Observatory. We're on a historic highway that's in the National Place of Registry. You can see the lava fields here, and as I get back to the car, there's just a small pullout right before you come to the lava field, so you have to pay attention. I'm not in my RAV today because we've got Maverick with us, so. But we're gonna head up on the road and see about this observatory. It's supposed to be pretty special. There's Maverick. There's the observatory. There's a walking trail. Somewhere I heard there's a bathroom. But we'll we'll see about that. Got Sean with me. Lots and lots of bikers. This is a biking trail also to come up the historic highway. So what do we got? The D Wright Observatory. Welcome to this half mile loop where you can see details of the giant river of lava. Let's take the loop first and, and stretch our legs and then go up to the observatory. So I guess pretty much it's going to be giving me different information as we go along. Feel free to pause to read what the information is, but this is just basically telling us that we're gonna be standing amid a sea of lava that covers nearly 50 square miles. We got lots of lava going on. This is what ex was explaining why this road is a historic road because I know that this used to be a wagon trail then it was like the highway then when the government took over then it became a state highway but it's such a historic wagon trail that that's why it's a historic highway. It's, you know kind of a lot of people here not I mean not super crowded but it's not deserted. We're just going to keep walking around. I like the random trees just out of the middle of nowhere that are just like, yes, I'm going to grow in the lava. I'm not the only one who wants to tell you about the random trees. Here's a small summary of why life returns. Hey, check that out. Yeah, I love just all the trees just popping up, fighting for life. Okay, here's a lava gutter. A few trees in it, but here is the lava gutter. We're halfway through the lava flow. That's really impressive when you're standing back and just kind of looking at this whole thing to just realize that this was all molten lava just flowing through here. 
and it just kind of makes you seem really tiny. Coming to the fork in the road and Maverick is choosing we're going right. Okay, here's the example of the cooling crack. Oh wow, oh yeah, you can really see it when you come this way. Let me zoom on in there. That's the road right behind there. Lots of birds I hear too. I don't have my feed. There's that crack. What was that called? The ledge. And you can come up here and then we're gonna have another fork in the road. This trail is wheelchair friendly if you can handle up to an 8% incline. We're gonna go off to the right again. This is kind of neat. They're talking about the different kinds of trees that you can find here. The noble fir, the cedar. This one, the hemlock, is what I keep seeing in the, uh, I fell down the rabbit hole of the alone show where they put people in the middle of nowhere to be alone. And they're always talking about hemlock and that's hemlock. And then we're gonna keep, there's like a lava rock in the middle they had to go around. Uh, I guess so that's, that doesn't necessarily help if it, for the ADA. Oh, that's, the, is that, I think that's the hemlock. I don't know. I'm not gonna be popping myself into the middle of, nowhere to survive anytime soon so that's good we got a little bit of a learning curve there what is this oh three sisters this is where you should be able to see the three sisters and smoky. yeah it's smoky can't really see them okay boy boy maverick could have not, he, he does not care one bit about me or Sean. He's just happy he's in the middle of nowhere. This is a really neat little trail. See, look at overlooks the highway there. That's a historic highway there. Somebody's camping. Somebody set up shop. Do a little camping. And Sniffing, boys, sniffing. Yeah. How neat. Uh, Sean thought he saw the old wagon trail that joins up with the highway. We didn't uh, cross over that way. I'll have to, and when we get back there, I it's will. There. Where? The oh, yeah. There it is. There's the wagon road. And then it comes up here, and then that's where it came down on the other side, where, where Sean first spotted it. Um, and obviously, wagons and cars are two different creatures, so they kind of just went alongside it some of the time. And the, at the lava's edge, what's this say? So this sign talks about where the forest and the lava meet. And I, you know, I really think to myself, what, what a couple hundred years ago, the settlers come through and they're just cruising through the forest and all of a sudden they just stumble upon like all of this. And I wonder what, I mean, I guess they would have known that it was lava, but I don't know. I just, I just imagine like just cruising through this giant thicket of a forest and then all of a sudden you have like a mountain of rocks. Oh, this is really cool. This is really cool. And then, oh, this is going to explain real quick how the soil begins to form for the trees to grow. But I got to keep going because I'm half wrapped around Maverick's leash. We'll come through here. I'm excited the little observatory is even smaller than I expected. But if it's half as cool as this trail, Oh, we got some steps on this path. That means that part of the trail is not wheelchair accessible, but the, the sign said it is. So 
This is the Great Wall. Let's see what the Great Wall is all about. Shout out to the Lone Bench. It's not the best view. I have a feeling it's a bit of a, you can look to the side. I have a feeling it's a bit of a, have a seat and rest your feet. Let's keep going. We're gonna go to the right. It looks like that right there up ahead is where we would have gone had we gone left. So if you want this, if you're on this trail and you can't do stairs, you wanna keep veering left. Let's see what we got as we go on the way down. There's the observatory, way off in the distance. Now what's special about this observatory is that the windows on a clear day, which unfortunately, folks, I'm really sorry, it, I have no control over mother nature, and it's really kind of smoggy from the fires, but each one of those windows looks out at a different mountain range. We're getting towards the end of the trail. What's this all about? Ooh, the North Peaks. It looks like the shape. The little belt neck comb is right in front of us. And then as you can see, we can't really see Mount Washington. And I can slightly see the outline of Three Fingered Jacks, but that could just be my imagination. Looking that way. Mount Jefferson. Mount Jefferson. Yeah, that's okay. We're still making fun number one. And we're going to the tiny observatory. It's so cute. We are back around to where we took the first, the very first uh, right, and that's the little cooling crack. Cooling crack. So yes, ADA friendly for sure, as long as you go up this and stay to the left. Don't go to the right, because you'll have stairs. Because I know there's some badass person in a wheelchair that can handle an 8% grade that wants to come see lava rocks. Now, whether or not they actually find my video and are like, hey, I can go there, that's a whole different story. Now, that's the wagon trail that uh, Sean first noticed when we came around the back and then came this way. And then the road is pretty well traveled. They close this road to thoroughfare traffic in the winter. Generally because there's so much snow that they don't really want to deal with it. I'm half bundled up. I didn't bring as much warm clothes as I should have brought because I completely forgot that I was transferring climates. I went to Goodwill, got this super nice mountain hardware, thermal, borrowed a sweatshirt. That's one thing about coming to Oregon. I can always find really good outdoor stuff for cheap at Goodwill because there's just so many people that do outdoor stuff here. So that's awesome. But this is a really cool little suggestion that I have to give a shout out to my child who said, hey, you should go here, mom. I think this is a really cool place that you should check out. So I think this might be a good time to get a drink of water and some snacks. Snacks, 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 snacks. Okay, we've had snacks. It's cold enough, we're gonna leave Maverick in the car to go up to the observatory. There's all kinds of tourists up there, kids, things like that. And he just needs to stay put. Okay, now up to the observatory is steps. Yep, lots of steps. I really like these. They use the natural lava rock. And here comes a whole motorcycle pack. Ah, the privy. I found the privy. The privy's on the way a little bit further the parking lot. You can walk to the privy from the parking lot just fine. Yeah. 
Ah, oh, look at that. Okay, we're walking right up on it. Just like a small little shelter. We can break away. I just love these. These I love. These pillars. They create the railing. I love that they just stuck to it. There's more stairs for us. I'm just gonna break away and go right on in. Wow! Wow, wow, wow. Okay. First we'll just do a little pan around and then through each window you can see different craters and or different mountains through each of these little viewpoints. For instance, this is going to be Mount Jefferson Summit. And I'm not sure it's going to translate very well because it's smoky. But the fact, like, see, this one's small. So you look all the way out to Mount Hood. I'm just trying to film really fast because a bunch of people are coming up. Black Butte. These are just windows that look out over the spots. But you have to step up and come and look inside each little window. And the rock inscription will tell you what it is. Let's go back around here because I want to get a good look at what they're talking about here. There we go. Now, there's no way you guys at home are going to be able to read that. Aha! Okay. See, slow and steady. This is this. It is the observation point has been provided to facilitate public enjoyment of the unusual and interesting combination of historical and geological features nearby. The development was planned and supervised by the Willamette National Forest and constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps in 1927. That's why this place is dope. That's why this place has super cool railings, why this place has all kinds of stuff. Look at, we can see this. You can actually kind of see that. If I can focus through there, that's the Belknap Crater. I mean, I can see it. I'm sorry that you can't at home. Here's a little belt nut crater that's going to be through here. You might be able to see that one. Yeah, look, there you go. Maybe, just maybe. Let's see if we can zoom in. Oh, yeah, there you go. You can actually see one. Isn't that great? That's a little belt nut crater. And let's see if we can see Mount Washington. Yeah, no, it's kind of hard to see because of all the smoke, but that's okay. Well, I come back, I, I come back to this to this area quite frequently, so hopefully maybe I can get up here on a clear day and do another one. Okay, this is, I don't know what this one says, but, oh, look at that. I don't know what this one says. I really don't, it's the rock is so worn away. But how cool. This is Horse Pasture Mountain. Mm. Can barely see through. Let's go outside and go back up the stairs. There's more stairs to go up, see? Yes. I, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Jenny and I am the keeper of odd knowledge and I love little things in life but if you've been with me before then you know rocks get me excited I love rocks and I love mason work I love hiking to the middle of nowhere and just finding rock sculptures there's the privy and as we're coming out here over the lava rock and then we'll come face back this way we're, we're headed up here What do you think? I'm gonna take you guys pictures, okay? I like how the lava float around those mountains. I'll zoom in and show that. It's pretty cool. Right. Oh yeah, between the trees and the what Sean's talking about is 
that right there. Yeah, on the other side of the right as well. And then it comes around to the right. And then again, that's the little belt nap right in front of us. That's a little belt belt nap belt nap. And then the large belt nap is right behind it. You can kind of see that. Kinda, kinda. And we're still we're still blocked with the smoke from Mount Washington. Yeah, hood. Mount Hood for sure. Then in the center of this thing, you've got a giant compass that tells you the direction of everything. So as we've been going through this whole time, is that it points to the Belknap Crater. There's the Belknap Crater. The little Belknap Crater. The little Belknap Crater. Mount Washington, we can't see. We've got Mount Jefferson, Mount Hood, Cache Mountain, Bald Peter. We've got Black Butte. We've got the Black Crater. And we've got the North Sisters, Middle Sisters, Little Brother, the Husband. What is the Husband? I've never heard of the Husband before. We might have to Google that. And then we've got Sims Butte and Horse Pasture Mountain and Scott's Mountain. And then this was put in by the Department of Agriculture's and the Forest Service in 1937. So this came 10 years after the actual observatory was built. We also, as you can see, that uh, the construction of the walls of the observatory, the top of the observatory, has small little holes for drainage for when it snows and rains that all the water can go out and go down through the side and doesn't turn this into a giant swamp. And head on back down. Isn't this beautiful? That's beautiful. Super crowded. Way more crowded than the castle I was at last week. Huh. That Austin Castle was was pretty much empty. See you on there. Okay, I got two more that I didn't see. There's that. And middle sister. Let's check out middle sister. You might be able to see middle sister maybe. And these are just, they're all carved in. The North sister. We should come and clean these. There's a, there's a, our heroes graves are fallen. Our fallen heroes graves I follow on Instagram. I think that's what it is, our heroes graves. He uses this non-toxic stuff to clean graves. And there's just one more information board at educational center here that we will check out. It explains. Ah, all right. There's a lot of information. Ha! Huh. Maybe I won't take pictures for you. You just have to look as I walk on by slowly. And you're just going to have to get yourself out here. Actually, I'll go slow enough that you can pause if you really want to read. I just think that this is amazing because this was being built at the same time as the junction was being built in Death Valley. Maybe just a few years behind. And so, like, that's what they were doing in the 20s. They were building rock observatories for people to come and see the beauty of the surrounding area. See, there's lots of people up there. 
sitting in a lava field. It's pretty cool. I kind of want to just sit and do some art and some sketching, but this is a really, really popular place, to be honest. It has been non-stop tourists. Now, there was hardly anybody that took the walking trail. <gasps> chipmunk, chipmunk, chipmunk. You're coming looking for food, aren't you? You're looking for food. You move so fast, I can hardly keep up with you. Are you coming over to say hi? Where are you going? Let's zoom back out. Where are you going? Okay. I love it when, when Mother Nature really just shows my ADHD. Because, you know, that's the joke. It's like, oh, look, a squirrel. <laughs> I need a special shout out and a special thank you to all the Sooners. We got Sooner Girl, we got Sooner Travels, and we got Sooner Girl's husband, Kenny, R32, R38, which are rail cars. Those are subways in New York, in case you don't know that. I had to learn that, I had to ask. And Maverick, 1976, and Sam I Am. Be grateful, make good choices on your own adventures, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Maverick in the city. Maverick's in the city.